Hi everyone and welcome back to Faith and Flower. If you're new here, my name is Robin and in today's video, I am answering all of your cleaning questions. I have been a homemaker and stay home mom for over 25 years. And on my channel, Faith and Flower, I do a lot of cleaning videos. Those are my most popular. So in today's video, I am going to be covering all of your questions regarding cleaning. I recently asked you in a community post and on Instagram to submit your questions, and I'm going to try to cover as many of those as I can in today's video. We are going to start today with zone cleaning. That is by far the most popular question that I've received both recently when I asked you for your questions and in previous videos. I discovered the Fly Ladies method of zone cleaning years ago and adapted it to work in our home. If you would like more information on the Fly Lady, I will have a link in my description box. Basically, it is a method for dividing your home into different zones and then doing deep cleaning in them once a week and you rotate through the different zones. So in our home, I have eight zones and I keep track of them in a notebook and I make a list for each of those zones of things that I would like to cover as I'm working in that particular area. For example, zone four covers our master bedroom, guest rooms, and closets. And so I always work from top down, starting usually with the ceiling fan. I will dust it very thoroughly. I'll also take care of any cobwebs on the crown molding and pay attention to the baseboards. I spend more time cleaning each furniture piece, so I will vacuum, dust, or wipe down the furniture more thoroughly than I would during my regular weekly cleaning. Also with zone cleaning, I include dusting the blinds thoroughly and occasionally vacuuming the curtains. And I say occasionally because I don't necessarily get that detailed every time I zone clean, but I do make sure to include it if I have extra time in the week and therefore it's done several times a year. And you'll notice on my list declutter in each area that's actually the first thing that i usually do and since i've done a pretty major decluttering in most areas of our home i don't have a lot to do but it's great to revisit that each time i'm zone cleaning and make sure that i'm not letting things accumulate so I will admit right now, while we are in quarantine, I have not been keeping up with zone cleaning as I usually do, but that's okay. The beauty of zone cleaning is that you can just pick it up at any time and go with it. When I start in zone one, I can finish that out in a week. I can break up the tasks into different days so that I'm just spending 10 or 15 minutes per day, or I can knock it all out in one day. It's up to you, whatever works for you. It's totally customizable and that's what I love about it. And then because I have our home broken up into eight different zones, by the end of eight weeks, everything has been touched. The next most popular question were questions about e-cloths. And so if you have watched my channel for any length of time, you will know my love for cleaning with e-cloths. E-cloth is just a brand of microfiber cloth. You can use them to clean your house basically from top to bottom using only water. And so what I love about them obviously is that they are a very economical way to clean your home. I don't have to buy any extra products, but also that I do not have to introduce any extra chemicals into our home if I choose not to. They trap 99% of dirt and bacteria, so they are perfect to use in all areas of our home. I especially like using them daily to wipe our shower fixtures and glass to keep them sparkling clean. They're also amazing at cleaning windows. They have other tools such as mops, and I absolutely love mine. Our floors have never looked better. I never get a buildup or residue. Because I just used water to clean our floors, it's perfect for the hardwoods and the tile. Another one of my favorite e-cloth tools is their extendable duster. You guys will see me using this all over our home. I use it to reach the high places and then I can detach it from the handle to use as a handheld duster as I'm doing here. It does a better job of trapping the dust than any other duster I've ever used. And I just vacuum it off in between when I feel that it's full 
and it is also machine washable even with the plastic part <laughs> so you can just toss it in and I let it air dry afterwards and to answer another frequently asked question e-cloths are machine washable my only caution is that you wash them in their own load don't mix them in with your other wash because they will attract the lint and they will become ineffective over time but just wash them in hot water with your regular detergent about once a week Another question I received was how to keep dark cabinets clean. And as you can see, our kitchen cabinets are dark and we have dark cabinets in other areas of our home. And the best way is with a damp e-cloth. I just wipe them down. It gets rid of the smudges and greasy buildup. I would suggest that you do it, especially around the stove hood area fairly frequently, especially if you've been doing a lot of cooking. And I notice the most smudges and buildup around the handles. So I usually pay attention to those areas is as well. E-cloths are also my favorite way to clean our stovetop on a daily basis. They do a great job of trapping all of the grease and I can just rinse them out and reuse them throughout the rest of the kitchen. I had one specific question about sticky blinds in the kitchen and I'm assuming that that's a kitchen grease buildup. E-cloths are perfect for that. I would give them a good thorough cleaning and then on a regular basis wipe them down and that should take care of the problem. One of my all-time favorite uses for them is cleaning the stainless steel in our kitchen. I just use a damp e-cloth to clean the stainless steel and then I follow it with their window polishing cloth or glass polishing cloth to buff it dry and you get a beautiful streak-free shine and there's absolutely no product buildup, which I love. When we bought our house, we did have buildup on the stainless steel and I'll give you another tip for removing that. It's ammonia and I wouldn't normally ever suggest using ammonia but it was literally the only thing that would remove the buildup on our stainless steel and it worked like a charm. I've suggested it to a couple of viewers who have asked and they gave me great feedback on that. So if you have buildup, a little bit of ammonia will take that off and then I would suggest using e-cloths afterwards. I'm also frequently asked my thoughts on e-cloth versus Norwex. And I used to use Norwex microfiber cloths and I think they're great. I don't have any problem with them. I just find that e-cloth does just as good of a job at a lower price point. And so that's why I generally recommend e-cloth. You also had a lot of questions about laundry. So I'm going to answer some of your specific questions and then just go over a little bit about how I tackle laundry in our home. One question was what to do about your fabrics pilling and how to make your clothes last longer. So part of my laundry routine is always separating everything so that I can wash like clothes with like. So I do a hot wash, a warm wash, and a cold wash. And I also do a delicates wash. Pay attention to the care label instructions inside each garment and then wash it in the appropriate temperature water. That will go a long way to extending the life of that piece of clothing. Also, I like to pull things out of the dryer when they've been in for about 10 minutes. That's enough time to release the wrinkles. And then I hang it to allow it to air dry. That goes a long way to reducing that pilling that you get on fabrics. It really does extend the life of the fabric. It also cuts down on how much you have to iron those things. I find that I don't have to iron most of the things that I hang to dry. And it also saves electricity because I'm not using my dryer as much. A lot of you want to know how to care for your dry clean only garments like coats and other items. I find that you can successfully wash a lot of those things if you turn them inside out, put them inside of a mesh bag, wash them on a delicate cycle, and use a really high quality detergent. My favorites are from the laundress and you can find a link to these in my Amazon store in the laundry section. And the link for my Amazon store is in my description box. I use the delicate wash for anything that is marked delicate like silk and the wool and cashmere shampoo are great for cashmere sweaters and wool coats, things like that. After you remove them from the washing machine, make sure that you let them air dry, preferably flat or on a drying rack to avoid any marks that you would get from hanging them on hangers or any stretching that might occur. How do 
do you keep your house clean when you have small children? And this is definitely a question that I get asked a lot and I have a lot of experience with that. I probably didn't do everything the way that I wish that I had now that I you know, am wiser and older and look back on my own experience, but I did develop the zone cleaning method to work for our home plus a daily and weekly cleaning routine to help me with that. And so those things are there for you to help you, not to make you feel like you have to be very rigid and check these things off or else you failed, but just as a guide so that you will know what you need to do. And when you have the time to do it, you just check those things off as you can. So when kids are small, they should be your first priority. They really are little only for a short while. So don't let that pass you by by being overly stressed about housework. Just do the things that absolutely have to get done on a daily basis. And anytime you have left over, you can check off things from your daily, weekly, or zone cleaning routine. So when you are passing through a room, you can and quickly do a tidy up. Just little bits and chunks here and there really work the best. And if you have a little bit longer period of time, I think setting a timer and doing a power hour or power 15 or 20 or 30 minutes, whatever you have, is a really great way to knock out an area. So if your kitchen needs some extra attention, set your timer for 15 minutes and then do everything that is on your list or just you know kind of look around and see what needs to be done and just do it in that amount of time. And you will be surprised at how much focusing your efforts during that short period of time will accomplish. Kids, of course, are great at making messes, and we should expect them to. It's part of their play. But part of their play is also wanting to do what the adults around them are doing and trying to imitate those things. So make that work for you by enlisting their help. You can assign small little tasks that they enjoy doing. My boys especially enjoyed vacuuming, dusting, and also giving them a squirt bottle with water and an e-cloth are great ways to get them set up for helping you as they get older and ready for more and more responsibilities. And speaking of responsibilities, if you have a very young child and some older children in the home, if there are some tasks that you absolutely need to do on your own, I would enlist your older children's help in caring for the younger ones. That's a great life skill as well. So that's my best advice for dealing with housework when your children are small. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that these answers to your questions were helpful and that they gave you a little extra motivation and inspiration for cleaning your home. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe. Subscribing is easy and absolutely free and we would love to have you be a part of our Faith and Flower community. I look forward to seeing you in the comments and in the next video. Have a great week.